Serhi Zagoretz, Ukrainian military expert, noted that the Ukrainian Defense Forces are conducting offensive actions in the western part of the Glushkovsky district, Kursk region. After our offensive in the Kursk region, Russia gathered forces from various areas and redeployed them a month later. The so-called Russian offensive has been ongoing for four days, although it was only active on the first day. We know that the enemy has redeployed troops from different areas to strengthen their presence in the Kursk region, with manpower estimated to range from 30,000 to 60,000. I believe that the figure of 35,000 is quite adequate, said Zuguretz on Espresso TV. According to the military expert, Russia tried to unblock the groups trapped in the Glushkovsky district, conducting offensive actions starting from Koronevo to the south. There were clashes near several settlements, but it seems that Russia's potential has been exhausted. Currently, there is information that Ukrainian troops in the western part of Glushkovsky district are conducting offensive actions to enter the rear or cut off the ability of Russian units to exert pressure along this line, starting from Koronevo and ending at Snagost, explained Zguretz. The military expert added that Russia is deploying additional units to the Kursk region. We are talking about airborne assault and airborne units of the Russian Federation, which carried out the main attack two days ago. Marine brigades are also being used, but the rest of the Russian troops are a collection of different units. The enemy's main striking forces, airborne and marines, are being actively restrained by our troops, which is causing damage and destroying the forces of these units, emphasized Zguretz. The Institute for the Study of War ISW writes that the Russian army continued its counter-attack in the Kursk region but achieved only minor successes, likely due to the continuation of the Ukrainian offensive and defensive actions. ISW military experts note that Russian troops have advanced so far in areas of the Kursk region that Ukrainian forces were not yet fully controlling nor attempting to control and Russian forces will likely face more difficulty when counter-attacking Ukrainian-controlled territory. The ISW uses the doctrinal definition of control when referring to control of terrain in which control is a tactical mission task that requires a commander to maintain physical influence over a specific area to prevent its use by an enemy or to create conditions necessary for successful friendly operations. Russian forces have advanced roughly 58 square kilometers in areas where the ISW has observed either maximalist claims or visual evidence of Ukrainian forces operating since starting counter-attacks. In the first 11 days of September, Russians launched more than 400 Shahed attack drones into Ukraine, but the Ukrainian armed forces are fighting back by changing their tactics to combat the growing Shahed threat. According to Forbes, the frequency of drone attacks is growing. In August, there were almost 800, which is the highest figure this year. At the same time, the Russians are changing the nature of drone attacks to make them more effective. In defiance of all the Russians' ploys to use the Shaheds, Ukraine has come up with an innovative system to detect them. A multitude of network microphones mounted on poles throughout the country listen to the sound of the Shaheds engine and a central air defense system compares the microphone data to track the route of each drone and calculate its likely target. Mobile air defense teams then move into position to intercept the Shaheds, receiving data via tablets. The publication noted that since most of the front lines are men, some of these mobile teams are made up of female volunteers. However, journalists noted that in recent months, enemy drones have begun flying at high altitudes and descending only in front of their targets. Drones have changed their tactics and are flying over Ukraine at an altitude of 2 kilometers and often 4 to 5 kilometers. This is done to avoid being hit by mobile fire groups, analyst Sergei Flash noted on the Telegram channel. The publication noted that Ukraine is saving Patriot and Iris missiles for ballistic missiles rather than drones, which has forced it to change tactics. In particular, the Air Force has become a key player in the fight against drones. Journalists noted that videos show Ukrainian helicopters shooting down Shaheds and this now appears to be a standard tactic. High-flying drones are detected by air defense radar and the Mi-8 helicopter can fly alongside while the gunner fires at it with a machine gun. Mi-24 helicopters are also used for this purpose, shooting down drones with a 23mm cannon. 
The tactic has proven successful. The August report indicated that the kill rate of Shahids has increased to 91% in the last six months, compared to 80% in the previous six months, the publication says. At the same time, alternative methods of combating these drones also work, even when they are not shot down. Recently, there has been an increase in the number of Shahids that have gone astray and do not hit not only their targets, but also the country they were launched into, the journalists noted. The Shahed-136 type of attack drone are an Iranian development. Russia initially imported ready-made drones from Iran. Later, parts of the drones were supplied by Iran and assembled in Russia. Now they are produced under license at a giant plant in Alabuga. The Shahed-136 has a distinctive sound which gave it the nickname Moped.